Praise the Lord, everyone. Today, I have a prophetic warning for worldly believers. So before I get into the word, I want to go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I just come to you now, Abba, and I just thank you so much, Lord, for this word. Father God, I just pray right now, Lord, that it would be you speaking, your spirit speaking through me, God. Lord, I pray that this message would be all of you, God. Lord, I pray that you would think through me and speak through me and share your word, God, with your people in the way that you shared it with me, Father God. I ask all of this now, Lord God, in Jesus' name. And I plead the blood of Christ over every person listening. Lord God, right now I pray that you would give them eyes to see what you are saying. Lord God, and ears to hear, God. Hallelujah. Father, I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, earlier this week, I was asking God to give his people a word. And as I waited for him, he led me to the book of Haggai. And if you know anything about the book of Haggai, it's a really short book in the Old Testament. And during this time, the people were called to rebuild the temple. And in the first chapter, God speaks to his people through his prophet Haggai. And he says to tell the people to consider their ways. So at this time, the people, instead of focusing on rebuilding the temple, the people were getting lost in building things for themselves. As I continued to read on the chapters, he led me to Haggai chapter 2. And when he was speaking to me about this particular verse, um, he was speaking to the priests and he was telling the priests to tell the people. He was asking them a question and it was talking about, you know, if, if something was unclean, if they were to do something. And the word specifically that he led me today to share with you was Haggai chapter 2 verses 14. And it says, So is it with this people and with this nation before me, declares the Lord, and so with every work of their hands, and what they offer is unclean. As I began to sit with the Lord and just meditate, and really hear his heart and what is he was saying as he began to bring me to his people that are currently being like the world so the, the two words that he was specifically speaking to me were was worldliness and compromise and you know he was sharing how you know when we're in this mindset of being like the world we don't really allow God to shine through our lives. And in fact, we actually blend in with the world. You know, in the Bible, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, the Apostle Paul specifically tells the believers, right, to not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. He says in verse 14, chapter 6, Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of God, of the living God, as God said. I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them and i will be their god and they shall be my people therefore go out from their midst and be separate from them says the lord and touch no unclean thing then i will welcome you and i will be a father to you and you shall be sons and daughters to me says the lord god almighty and as i begin to again contemplate this verse he then began to share with me these things he said there are many people of his people who find themselves defending things that appeal to their flesh but know in reality that these things do not please him and that these things god does not approve of some example of these things are listening to secular music and this music is obviously the music that does not glorify god these this music is specifically speaking about filthiness right the the things that these people are promoting in their lyrics going to concerts that promote filth again with that that whole um 
type of industry things that are are really to the other side right it, it's it's worldliness it's promoting the things of this world drinking supporting days such as halloween so halloween was just yesterday if you are a christian and you are one of those people who consider halloween not to be such a big deal i want to give you a news flash that it is a big deal there is no there is nothing good about halloween and in fact this day op um, openly promotes evil and another thing he was saying was, you know, refusing correction, you know, fornication, you know, all of these things that people in the world do. And so why is this important? It's important because God is saying in this hour that he wants his people to return to him. He's saying to his people right now that he wants you to return to him. If this message applies to you, God is saying to you that he wants you to truly give him your entire heart. 1 Peter chapter 4, 3, it talks about, you know, once we were in the world and we had enough of living this way, right? And there was times in our life where before we knew Jesus, we were doing all of these things, right? We were living like people who enjoy immorality, lust, worship, idols, all these things that we put above God. And in the and the truth is because we didn't know any better. We were doing these things because this is what we knew. But now as Christians, we know better. So if we know better, we ought to do better. You know, it's time for us to lay aside our excuses, lay aside why we're not choosing to submit to the word of God, choosing not to do what God has called us to do. When you think of, you know, worldliness, in essence, it is choosing to do what unbelievers are doing, right? And this is so offensive to God because God says in his word, in his word to not be friend to not be friends with the world right he says in james chapter 4 verses 4 he says you adulterous people do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with god therefore whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of god this is some serious thing right when he calls us right here in james chapter 4 adulterous people it's like a direct violation of our relationship with him. It is so serious to God because he knows when we are in this place of, you know, choosing all these things in the world above God, right? It, it gets him jealous and God is not jealous of you. God is jealous for you. God longs to shower you with his goodness. God longs to shower you with who he truly is. And when your hearts are set to seek pleasure outside of him and more than him, these things become idolatry. These things become just this high priority in your life where you really value these things. And so God is saying to you now to come out from among them. He's saying to come out from this way of living and to separate yourselves, right? To truly live in a way that pleases him. Because he says in his word, you know, I have chosen you to be a holy priesthood, a holy nation that is set apart unto him. I believe that's in 1 Peter 2, 9. You know, that, the, that we would show the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And this is really what he desires for us, right? To be the light of the world. And... We know that the times that we're living in, we cannot live like the rest of the world. If unbelievers are going to see us, right, they want to see something different. They want to see like, wow, they truly know God. Wow, they are truly all out for God. Why? Because we have a relationship with God. We know God. And maybe the reason why you haven't been with God is because, you know, there was other things that have captivated your heart. And, you know, we've all been there. We've all been there. And, you know, I really just do believe that this is a season that God is just calling his entire body into a higher level. A higher level where we can truly seek him to lay aside, again, our old ways, the things of our past, to truly 
be who we've been called to be, to truly be a light to the nations. This is the hour. This is what he is saying right now. And so I want to tell you that if this is for you, there's hope. You know, whenever God gives us a warning, he first wants us to take this seriously. Why does he want us to take it seriously? Because it will affect us. Not only will it affect us, but it will affect our entire future. And does God know all things? Absolutely. But why would you want to put yourself in unnecessary pain to delay your purpose, to delay your blessings by what? By choosing to enjoy the pleasures of this world. And I'm going to tell you, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's fun. It's fun for a moment. But then when you realize, you know, who God really is, you see that God's goodness is greater than anything that this world has to offer. And that really comes down to you. That comes down to your decision, your choice that you want to make. You know, God is, is right here. He's waiting for you with open arms. But it, it has to take you for you to be able to realize that, yes, you know, God, you've been here all along. You've never left me. And this is what he He wants from you to truly see, you know, to, to come home, son, to come home, daughter. And he will welcome you. He will receive you. And he gave me Hosea 14, chapter 1, verses... Hosea chapter 14, verses 1 through 4, to close. And it's, it talks about a plea to return to the Lord. So I want you to listen clearly. So this is from the ESV version. And he says, Return, O Israel, to the Lord your God, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take with you words and return to the Lord and say to him, Take away all of our iniquity, accept what is good, and we will pay with our bulls the vows of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, and we will say no more, our God, to the work of our hands. In you the orphan finds mercy. Verse 4, I will heal their apostasy. Another word for apostasy means their, their backslidings. And I will love them freely. For my anger has turned from them. Hallelujah. So God is saying, return to him. He is saying, right, to ask him to take away the iniquity, the things that you have in, in your heart, the things that only he can pluck out, right? The Bible says, you know, that we, there is a, there is a verse in, I believe it's in Proverbs. I can't think of it right now. Holy Spirit, help me. Um, but yeah, it just speaks of like God taking away the, the iniquity in our heart. As we uh, confess our sins to, to him, he is the one to remove these things from our heart. And when we begin to truly realize and recognize, you know, everything that God has done for us. You know, I believe this is the time where we will truly see, you know, God's goodness. And we will see, you know, how it says in his word to... Um, to just truly seek him, right, with all of his heart, that our sorrow, that our repentance is not like a sorrow that leads us to the world, but it is in fact a sorrow that leads to repentance. And and God is just saying to, to return to him. So if this is you, I want to go ahead and pray for you. And I want you to know that, you know, God loves you so much. And it is when we truly accept his love for us. It is when we truly recognize who he is that we see that anything else compared to God, there is no comparison. And it is only when you believe and you see that he's been here all along and how much he loves you and how much he wants to protect you, right? Because it is when you're in this place of true surrender that you can truly flourish in your life. And so I pray that today... You know, you, you take this word back to him. If this is indeed for you, that you take this word back to the Lord and you pray and you ask the Holy Spirit to show you what is it in your life that you need to let go of? What is in it? In, what, excuse me, I can't even talk today. What is it in your life that you need to, you know, renew in your in your way of thinking, right? Because at the end of the day, it does come down with, with our minds and, and them needing to be renewed. 
So I, I do pray that, again, you will take this back to the Lord and you will allow him to show you. And as you allow him to show you, you, you go on, you move on, you know, so, so that God can continue to train you, to prepare you, right, to be a blessing in these end times so that God can be glorified through your life. Heavenly Father, right now, I just want to pray for my brother. I want to pray for my sister right now, God. I pray for every person under the sound of my voice, Father God, who this word is for. Holy Spirit, right now, I ask that you would just touch them. God, I pray right now, God, that you would minister to them. I pray right now, God, that you would lead them, God, to repentance. God, I pray, Lord, right now that they would turn to you, God, that they will turn to you, God, with all of their heart, with all of their soul, with all of their strength, God. And that, Lord, they would put you first. Lord, I thank you that you say in your word that you are married to the backslider. God, I thank you that there is no one too far off from you. That there is no one that you can pluck up. That God can, no one can be plucked out of your hands. So God, I just pray that your people today would choose to surrender to you, God. Re re choose to surrender to you every burden, God. The things that have been keeping your people in, ba in bound bondage. Father God, I just pray right now that you would destroy that yoke now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray right now that you would rescue them i pray right now that you would send angels to encamp around them father god i plead the blood of jesus over them and over their families god and that no weapon that is formed against them would prosper in the name of jesus lord i pray that in this hour you would train them you would prepare them god as you told david lord god that you are the one who trains our hands to fight and Lord, may they know that they have been called to be a warrior for your kingdom. They have been called, Lord God, in this hour, Father, to represent you, that you are the Lord of Lords and that you are the King of Kings and that your kingdom will have no end. So, Lord, I just pray that this word, Lord God, would uh, take root on good ground in their heart, Father God. I pray that you would continue to open up their eyes. I pray that you would continue to give them wisdom, God. I pray right now that you would release a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of in the knowledge of you, God. Help them, Father God. Help them to see you who you truly are, God. Because when they truly see you for who you are, God, they will continue, God over and over to search you god because you are goodness so father i pray all of this in the name of jesus and lord god i seal this prayer now by the blood of christ and i bind up all spirits of backlash and retaliation now in the name of jesus amen amen hallelujah well that's all i have for today and thank you for joining me and i will see you next time